Good morning, good morning, good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But first, an elaboration on the last video's little nerd chat. I mean, I did warn y'all. I mean, I, I wear that nerd flag. I, I wave it around loud and true. One of the few things I didn't mask as a kid is my enormous, enormous level of nerddom. I regret nothing. One of the instances in recent history of the power of the small is the JD versus AH case. Because it really was the power of the small. On one hand, it was her lies against an innocent guy. But on the other hand, what it became is the individuals with rational minds and good hearts refusing to sell, swallow the lie that corporate media big heads were trying to force down our throats. We weren't just going to sit there and allow them to malign an innocent person. What did that domino effect have? When you had people like Laura B begin to defend them and then more people and then more people all in our own individual ways with the belief in the power of the small and the impact that we had and still have and are continuing to still have, which is why the media and people who want to believe AH against all logic and rational thought are so angry why they hate us so much because we stand as a reminder that no matter how big you are no matter how much money a particular movement may have that one small person deciding to take a stand on the side of truth I'm not talking about their truth. There is no their truth. There is the truth and there is lies. I hate to bust your modern bubble, but them's the facts. And even though the modern world would have you believe otherwise, you can make up your own stories, but you don't get to make up your own facts. One small person who then impacted another, who then impacted another, and we were able to shake the halls of the so-called great. And still are. And still are. That's what I'm talking about. And how does that even reference back to my nerdum talk about Tolkien? Well, folks, there's where that kind of faith started and began. My belief in the small. That one act, that one stand, that one small act of kindness and the ripple effects and how that can carry it out into the world to do an infinite amount of good. That is a pretty relatively still in the public mind example of the power of the so-called small. Never doubt it. I like to say there are three unchangeable things in this world. The power of the small, death, and taxes. If the small didn't have such an impact, then why did corrupt kings always fear peasant revolts? Yeah, that. That. All right. Sorry to get into all of that, but once again, while going on social media and still seeing 
it has seemed bizarre to me until I put it into this context, the vitriol that we are still receiving. Oh, it's oh, it's literally now. It's actually been a whole year, and still the media is coming after us. Still, her stands are attacking us, including on threads that have nothing, literally nothing to do with the case, none whatsoever. At least they have me. It's because what do people who have become too big for their britches hate more than anything else? When they're reminded who put them in that seat of power in the first place. When they're reminded of the impact of one small person and they want to squelch that out as much as possible. They want to basically squash and destroy us and use us as an example. But they can't because that's the power of the small. They can squash us out. They can try to scrub us from the media. But that impact ripples out. And there's really nothing they can do to stop it. One hopes it might inspire one within their ranks to start believing again. And start becoming like the journalists of old who puts their biases aside and actually simply presents the facts as they are without a slanting bias towards one side or another. At least one would hope. And I'm not just talking about the left wing here. I'm talking the right wing has been doing this for decades, literal decades. They've been doing this since I was a kid. I remember watching it during, I remember very fundamentally the Bob Dole Clinton race and the slants from both sides of the media. I know because I was doing a report on it when I was a kid, but yeah. Nerd rant over. But you see where I'm going with this, don't you? What that sort of story inspires is that any individual, anyone, even you, can do one small thing or one great thing and change everything. Even if you're not necessarily always around to be able to see it. Now to the disclaimers. In the description box, folks, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center, again, mentioning the power of the small, doesn't want you to read. It was written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called Behavior Modification Program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit to get it removed from the website. Well, Neuroclastic has refused, folks, so please read that article and share on all your social media. And if you ever have a doubt in the power of the small, ask yourself a simple question. Why would a small organization that doesn't even bring in $10,000 in revenue per year be able to shake up an organization that brings in millions off the back of its victims every year like the JRC to the point that they are willing to try to drown them out with an expensive defamation lawsuit case. Says a lot, doesn't it? Remember that. Also linked in there, speaking of, Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC actually sees through with their threat. Also included the Ozarks first article in regards to the Agape boarding school slash Stoneforhill boarding school situation. 
This is a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has and pending folks. Excuse me. Acid reflux sucks, kids. Really sucks. Over 21 civil lawsuits claims. Hold on. And the allegations leveled against it. All which have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services. And they include the following. Sodomy. Rape. Sexual assault. Child abuse. Psychological and emotional abuse. Child trafficking. Starvation. And that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on the premises with full access to the boys on um, multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy defunding public libraries to actually do his job and a governor who's so mega that he probably should seek help. So please read that article and share on all your social media. Also included in there, the usual pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masumba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates, and of course, the ever-present, self-explanatory, change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear a vivid description of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on occasion. We speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, folks, parental supervision is very highly advised. Trigger warning, we are about to descend into the mad ravings of the lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear gaslighting, victim blaming, pseudoscience, lies, abuse and torture, apologensia, bigotry and ableism, all from a man with a massive ego and even larger God complex. So folks, as always, be prepared for the condescending, arrogant, word salad amount of stupid that we are about to endure today, okay? All right, to give you some context. Matthew Israel is using the study published by the Bay Institute as a means to act as a bludgeon to other service providers, including the largest one of them all, the ARC trying to say that they are just attacking them because they are a competitor. In fact, that they are a national organization with reach into just about every town and county in the United States. Their client and consumer list is vast. Their programs goes from kindergarten all the way into end of life services. But Dr. Matthew Israel is going to have you believe that this organization that has been around for decades and decades and has serviced millions of consumers since its inception is somehow not individuals who have served kids quite as severe with behavioral issues as he has. If it sounds like the numbers don't work, it's because they don't. Okay, I'm not a math head, and even I can tell you that. And I'm pretty sure that math is the embodiment of evil. But anyways, I may be a nerd, but I'm not a math nerd. Math is from the devil. All right. Let's go to the next paragraph. The concept of positive behavioral intervention support, PBIS, was developed back in the 1990s and has gained wide acceptance as the preferred approach to helping individuals with behavior problems. DRC has been a pioneer in using positive behavioral procedures since it was founded in 1971 and continues to develop innovative and effective positive behavioral procedures. No, you don't, doctor! If I act like a neurotypical, you'll give me a lollipop? 
It's not positive behavioral intervention. You've stated previously, in fact, in your gigantic pile of word salad that you call a defense against the New York 2006 report, you said very explicitly that you don't even know what positive behavioral intervention was, let alone how to properly actually initiate it. And you tried to tell us that it didn't have the numbers to back up its effectiveness, which is a load of crap. I've seen the data. I can still see those data sheets behind my eyeballs when I go to sleep at night. It can't be both ways, doctor. Do you know what positive behavioral intervention is? Or do you not? Because it can't be both ways. Let me compound that point. Positive behavioral intervention is something that exists separate outside of ABA. There are some within ABA who employ it, true, but it exists in and of itself as a separate program entirely. Okay. You use stick and carrot. These are not the same things, doctor. As someone who has seen it employed and has recommended it for those for whom I felt it would be a, the best intervention, you're full of crap. And you know it. You simplify it. You simplify what other people do and you try to trivialize it. And then you try to sell us your stick and carrot routine like it's the epitome of modern behavioral interventions. It's a joke, doctor. Want to know what your version is? Insanity. It's condescending. You're treating us like dogs. You are literally using Pavlov on human beings. That's what you do. What they do is infinitely different. And the fact of the matter is, you don't even know whether it work on your individuals or not, because as by your own admission, sir, you have stated quite clearly that you don't even know what it is, let alone how to properly implement it. You can't tote your stick and carrot routine and say that you are a pioneer, sir. The only thing you're a pioneer in is in modern torture tactics. That's literally it and that's all. You took Dr. Mingala's ideas and decided to turn it to 11. That's what you're an expert at. Okay? You are hardly a pioneer in positive behavioral intervention, sir. You cannot on one end say you don't know what it is, let alone know how to implement it, and then try to trivialize it and cast it aside, and then on the other end try to act like all of a sudden you're a pioneer of its methods. Seriously? You're trying to tell me I don't know what it is, that it's not effective anyway. And then try to tell me that you're a pioneer in it since 1971. Really? Really? So tell me, doctor. Is that what contributed to those six deaths? Your pioneering work in positive behavioral intervention? Because, yeah. Yeah. That. All right. Please don't try to basically fart in my face and tell me it's the perfume of roses, sir. Do not insult my intelligence. I may not have a photographic memory, but I do have a very good one. 
And I remember how you responded to the concept of positive behavioral intervention in your response to the New York State Department of Special Education, where you said quite clearly, while you were demeaning the practice and its usefulness and its numbers, which you basically pulled out of your hindquarters, that you didn't know what it is nor how to properly use it. And then you try to compare your basically psycho sensory acid Disney trip from hell presented as a wonderful reward. Dude, I would rather be shot than to be put in your reward store. I would really, literally take a bullet to the gut than in your so-called reward store. Okay? Okay, we clear? Literally would rather be shot. Because that sounds a lot more fun than your blinking lights, your god-awful colors, and your horrific design. Dude, okay? You don't know what it is. What you do is you use Pavlov on kids. You're an expert in modern torture techniques. That's it and that's all. To sit there and try to tote for your whole chest that you're a pioneer when you've said previously that it would never work, you're contradicting your own words. It's kind of like AH. It's like you can't keep one lie straight from the other. And when someone catches you in a lie, you play the victim. And sadly, also like A.H., he also has a little army of Kool-Aid drinkers that believe whatever he says, regardless of how insane, how contradictory, and how much of a lie it is. We're going to close on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time, and as always, we here at Smelling Tea do hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.